You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. Do you agree with me that we are living in unusual times? Goodness gracious me, unusual times. But I'm going to be bold and state that we are living in amazing times. The possibilities of what God is wanting to do in and through you in this time, in this day and age, is amazing. You know, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 9, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither is it entered in the heart of man all the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. And so Holy Spirit is wanting you and I to draw close to him, to know what's on the heart of the Father for each one of us. You know, Psalm 25 verse 2 should be a prayer. We should be praying every day. It goes like this. Show me your ways, O Lord. You want God to show you his ways? Teach me your paths. And it goes, lead me into your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Make that a prayer. Write it down. Remember, remind yourself when you, go, when you get home, before you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning, pray that prayer. Let's face it. Life is full of highs and lows. We've all experienced it. Mountaintop experiences, valley experiences. You know, if we look back at 2020... That was only last year. Highs and lows. Numbers of people went through difficult times. Numbers of people had mountaintop experience, but many had low experience as well. Remember the panic buying? Toilet paper? We still haven't run out. (laughs) What about the travel restrictions? You know, Pastor Lee and they were supposed to fly to Adelaide. And that was cancelled. In fact, it was cancelled twice. And this morning, tomorrow, we're supposed to fly to Adelaide. And guess what? It's cancelled. So if anyone wants to go to Adelaide and drive us there, that would be lovely. (laughs) But we'll have to try some, find some other way. You know, King David is a great example of someone who experienced mountains, high mountains in God, experiences in God, and yet very low moments. And we learn from David's life that he overcame major, a major obstacle in his life, something that you and I have experienced and unfortunately will experience from time to time. But before I share that, C.H. Spurgeon, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a great Baptist preacher in the turn of the 19th century, he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw Satan standing behind his long table, And on the table were beautiful gifts wrapped in beautiful paper. And he had demons around the place screaming and jumping up and down saying, what are these? What are these? What are these? He said, stop, just hang on. What are these? And he said, Satan said, these are the weapons I use against Christians. Well, what's this one? Ah, this is fear. And guess what? It's working today. What about this one? Ah, this is anxiety. I love it when Christians get anxious. It rejoices my heart when I see people get anxious. What about this one? This is worry. What about this one? Low self-image when people look upon themselves and think, oh, I'm just no good. I'm hopeless. What about this one here? Ah, this is called gossip. I love it when I see Christians gossip. What about this one here? Criticism. I love it when when God's people criticize one another. And so he went through all the weapons that he uses against you and I. And over to the one side was a gift wrapped in just brown paper. And the demon said, well, what's this one over here? He said, just hang on. Just hang on. Just hold hold steady. This is the weapon I use when all else fails can anyone tell me what it is discouragement 
When all else fails, you know, the greatest, some of the greatest uh, men and women of God now and in past centuries have experienced the attacks of the enemy in this area of their lives. Discouragement. If you've ever felt discouraged or fearful, unsure of yourself, then this message is for you. And as you and I apply the same principles that David applied for his life to attack this enemy of discouragement, you and I will experience the same breakthroughs that he experienced. You know, I love what uh, last week what Ray New said. Um, she said that um, she was feeling discouraged. She went through a period of discouragement for a situation she was going through. And the Holy Spirit said these words to her. I have relentlessly and earnestly pursued you. I have relentlessly and earnestly, Ray knew, I pursued you. And she said when she heard those words, this discouragement lifted. And you know, I'm sure she could say, if the enemy should attack her in that area again, she would remind herself what the Holy Spirit had said to her. Psalm 42 is an amazing psalm. I love Psalm 42. The words were written by David, but the song, it was put into music by the sons of Korah. You'll find that most commentators and Bible scholars will tell you that the words were actually words of David. And it starts off with this, As a deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul after you. My soul long. And David wrote this, that line with this in mind. A deer is standing in the shade, thirsty for water that is only a few feet in front of him or her, knowing, that, knowing full well that if it made an approach towards the water, it may mean the cost of its life. But the thirst becomes greater than the fear. And when your thirst becomes greater than your fear. You know the thing that I feared was the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues. I want the power God. But not that tongues thing. But when my thirst became greater than my fear. I said God I want whatever you can give me. Give me the lot. You see, there was a hunger in the heart of David to know God. Didn't God say himself, I have found a man after mine own heart? Wouldn't you like that to be said of you? I would like God to say that to all of us. I have found a man after mine own heart. I have found a woman after my own heart. You see, when you hunger for God, to know Him personally, to know Him intimately, and things are not working out for you, guess what? The enemy will start attacking you to cause you to doubt that God is a good God, that God is for you and not against you. What do they say in this psalm, verse 3 and verse 10? Where is your God? God, can't you see what I'm going through? Can't you see the difficulties? Listen, just speak to me. Let me feel your presence. Just say one word. And there's no answer. And so in this psalm, David begins to feel discouraged. What caused him to be discouraged? Well, one thing, his own son wanted to kill him, wanted to usurp the throne. And so David escaped to the countryside to get away from him. Listen to his plaintive cry in verse 3. My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, where is your God? So how did he become over, overcome a discouragement? Firstly, to be an overcomer, David had to speak to his soul. Why are you cast down, soul? 
Why are you disquieted within me? Why are you feeling this way? Why are you anxious? Why are you confused? Why are you discouraged? Why are you fearful? Why are you feeling this way? Have you ever realized that problems often start in life because you are listening to yourself speaking instead of speaking to yourself? Hey, what did you say? Say it louder. Come on, speak to me. Soul, speak to me. Church, we must learn to preach truth to ourselves. The moment you wake up in the morning, it's the same thought. It's going over in your mind. A mistake that you made, a fault that you made, a sin that you made, something that you did. I'm hopeless. I'm no good. Yeah, I'm a failure. Yeah. When I call God, he's not there. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I understand what you're saying, soul. I agree with what you're saying. Somebody is talking. Who is talking to you? You. You, yourself, is talking to you. Instead of allowing him, itself to talk to him, David started to talking to self. He said, why are you cast down? Why are you feeling this way? His soul had been depressing him and crushing him. So he stands up and says, soul, listen to me. I will speak to you. If God is for me, who can be against me? Who can bring a charge against God's elect? I am God's elect. You know, there are times you need to speak to yourself, preach to yourself, question yourself and say to your soul, now listen here, soul. You can't mold me into your way of thinking. You can't dictate to me. I'm not going to be shaped by the words that you say to me. Yes, I'm going through struggles. Yes, I'm going through trials. Yes, it's difficult, but, I, but it won't last because weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. When these thoughts come, we need to challenge our soul realm with these questions. Remember, don't question God. The enemy wants you to. Don't question God. Question yourself. Why? 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 Why are you anxious? Why are you sad? Why are you fearful, uptight? Why are you discouraged? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me when I began to formulate these thoughts. And he said to me, thank God that there are promises in the Bible for all the wise. You know, Glennis and I were listening to, been listening for quite some time to a lady by the name of Dr. Helen Rosevere, R-O-S-E-V-E-A-R-E. And she was a missionary in Congo from 1953 to 1973 for for 20 years. And um, in 1964, the civil war broke out And all the missionaries were rounded up. And she in particular was severely mistreated and terribly abused. Absolutely terribly abused. And questions were going through her mind. And the Lord said to her, don't ask the wise. Can you thank me for trusting you with this experience even if I never tell you why? What a powerful, powerful statement. You know her favourite verse that someone gave her before she went overseas was Philippians 3.10. 
that I might know him. Oh, that's good. And the power of his resurrection. Oh, amen to that. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable with his death. She said, I want to live that verse in my life. Wow. Notice what David said in verse 8. He said, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me a prayer to the God of my life. You know, Job says, God gives songs in the night. So Paul and Silas in the jail in Philippi had songs in the night. And so to be an overcomer, David had to speak to his soul. Secondly, if you read Psalm 42, he continues speaking to his soul. He said, why are you cast down? Hope in God. I thought, Rainer, you're going to take my sermon. I'm finished. I'm going home. Have an early lunch. <laughs> hope in God, the verb hope, is actually a command in Hebrew. The Greek translation of this verse means some hope now. Don't put it off. Just do it. Do it now. It's a command. It's, an, it's urgent. Remember the Bible says God is the God of hope. He is the God of hope. Hope means to wait expectantly. Not to struggle or strive. Be confident, soul, and trust in your God that he will come through. You know, I don't know about you, but... My wife finds it hard to wait. Or is it the other way around? Her husband finds it hard sometimes to wait. <laughs> you go to a restaurant and you're looking at a time, you want to call up the waiter. Come on, I want something to eat. I think it's the hardest thing sometimes for us as Christians to wait, to wait on God. To wait. You know, when I prepared this, I just had that little impression in my heart. Phil, you're preaching to yourself too, don't forget. And I said, yes, I won't forget. I won't forget. Lord, I won't forget. You know, there's a whole old hymn we used to sing, Our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. In Lamentations 3, verse 26, it is, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. In Romans 15, verse 13, it says, I pray that God, the God, the source of hope. Who's the source of hope? God. Will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. God is the source of my hope. And he says to me here that I will overflow when I look to him as my hope. Then I will overflow with a confident hope because Holy Spirit who dwells in me will bring us into that confidence in him. And I believe that we all want to overflow with confident hope. And it's through Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Thirdly, verse 5. Start praising God. Hope in God, for shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. And the word praise is interesting. The Hebrew word praise in this verse is toda. And it actually means to praise Him with a loud with a loud voice. You know, I see people and they, I, I love them. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, yes, yes. 
Lord. Now there are times we need to praise you, God. I glorify your name. I, Lord, you're so mighty. You're so majestic. Lord, I give you all the honor and glory. And then you stretch out your hands. That's what it means to praise him with a loud voice and stretch out your hands towards him in anticipation for what to, to receive, for what you already have got and what you haven't got as yet. It's an attitude of thanksgiving to God for his promises for deliverance, even while I haven't received it yet. Still no change. Nothing has happened. But I'm thanking God for things not just received as well as the things I already have at hand. What does that tell us? Start praising him for the hope you have in God. Don't wait. Start praising him. Is there anything that you've been looking for in your life a need? Then st start toed up praising him. You haven't received it yet. Start toed up praising him. You know, the Bible says God is enthroned upon the praises of, of Israel. You know what that means? That when you praise God, you present God with a throne and God takes his rightful place on the throne of your heart. And when he is enthroned on your heart, your outlook on life changes. The situation that's been attacking you, the challenges that you're going through, suddenly looks totally different. What was a mountain is a molehill. Things change when you look from his perspective because he's taken his rightful place on the throne of your heart. And fourthly, I love this. I love this verse. In verse 6, Therefore, I will remember. Act of the will. I will remember you from the land of Jordan, from the mountains of Hermon, Heights of Hermon from Hill Miser. You know, there's something, there's something about looking back. What God has done in your life. There's something to look back and think, yeah, God, you've taken me this far. You know, I'm, I can look back 68 years and see how God has led me led me. Did I disappoint him? Yes. Did I fail many times? Yes. Did I make mistakes? Yes. But I look back and see the patience of God bringing me through, bringing me through. My eyes are on you. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. You know, I'll just add this. This wasn't in my notes, but when I was in Vietnam, I started to go away from God. Started to Shift the elbow. One day, it was two o'clock in the afternoon, bright sunny day. And the rubber trees, probably from here to the end of this building, saw a bright light. Keep in mind, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, bright sun, that this was brighter than the sun. And I heard these words, stop, you're going too far. And I knew it was God speaking to me. There is something about looking back and remembering what God has done in your life. In Psalm 20, 77 verse 11, it says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. In Psalm 140, 43 verse 5, it says, I will remember the days of old. I will meditate on your works. I will muse on the work of your hands. In other words, I will just keep, I'll just focus. I will meditate, but deep meditation, just thinking it over and over and over. The work of your hands. You know, Jesus said, the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. And the three places that David said to remember, he said the land of Jordan. And I'm sure David reminded himself that, hey, God protected me. When the enemy pursued me, when Saul pursued me, when even my own son pursued me, God protected me in the land of Jordan. I can look back and see how 
He guided me and led me. And then the, the heights of Hermon. You know, geographically and historically, the heights of Hermon is always snow-capped. Mount Hermon is all, it's about 9,200 feet in height. That's about 2,000, I did write it down, 2.8 metres. 2,800 metres. And when, it's, when the wind is blowing from the tops of Mount Hermon, and it's a hot day in Jerusalem, which is just over 100 k's away, you can feel this incredible refreshing. You know, I asked my friend, he verified that, from uh, Lebanon. We need to remember the times we've been refreshed. It could have been in a connect group. It could have been at service. It could be singing a song. Something happened. I just, I just feel refreshed. You know, you'll, you'll feel refreshed when you hear this next last song today. Feel refreshed. What about the uh, hill miser? The word hill miser means small. You know, I have kept little notes that people have written to me both here as well as overseas, just thanking me for the ministry, thanking me for what... And I just... just it, it's the little things you never forget. You know, if you think of someone, someone comes to your mind, if the Holy Spirit's put someone to you, someone in your mind, why don't you just text them? Just say, hey, listen, I'm just thinking, how are you going? Come on, let's reach out to one another. David said, I will, David said, I will remember you from the land of Jordan. From the heights of Hermon. Let me share with you two Jordan experiences. Or one Jordan experience and one miser experience. When I was in Botswana about seven years ago, I just finished preaching. I stepped off the platform and I was just praying for the pastor and his wife. And I started, uh, it wasn't long, I started to hear a rumble. I thought, well, there was no indication there was going to be a storm or rain or anything. And suddenly the whole tent uh, got, uh, got knocked over. And it was total darkness and people were screaming, Jesus, 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 and speaking in tongues. What happened? A truck had come through the tent. The lady that was standing at the tent door was instantly killed. And the truck landed on the platform. The platform was about this high. And um, if I had stay stayed there three minutes before, I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. That's the land of Jordan experience for me. That's God's protection. And the fact that 150 people were in that tent, kids with their, uh, uh, kids with, with their parents and so on. A land, the, the hill miser for me was, two months ago, I, uh, my friend in Singapore, a pastor friend, he wanted me to send me one of my sermons. to, And so I said, to Google, uh, how amazing is Holy Spirit? So he did that and he, Wanted to share it with his people. Two days ago, three days ago, Friday, he, he uh, texted me. He said, can you give me the notes for that sermon? Because I've got 500 people that want to discuss it, talk about it. And, uh, and 250 of them are hardcore prisoners, lifers in jail. That's a little miser for me. But it's also a little miser for Gateway Church. Because you're part of it. Let me finish by comparing two verses, verses 5 and 11. In verse 5, it says, Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall help. praise him for the, help of my, for, for the help of his countenance. And verse 11, it says, Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of my countenance. And my God. Notice verse 5. For I shall praise him for the help or the health. For the health. The word help means health. Health of his countenance. And my God. And so, and, and help, sorry, help of his countenance. And verse 11 says, For I shall praise him for the health or the help of my countenance. His countenance broke through and lifted my countenance. 
So the depression that I was living with, I was fighting and battling with, has been lifted. Why? Because he faced his discouragement by speaking to his soul, by having hope in God, just do it. By praising him, Toda praise, by remembering what he did for us and his goodness. And to deal with discouragement and to be free of it. Let's just do what David did. Let's just do what David did. Speak to your soul. Have hope in God. Praise Him and remember what He did for you in the past. You know the last thing that David said in that Psalm, verse 11? In verse 3 and verse 10, the criticizers and the ones that wanted to put him down, the enemy, kept saying, where's your God? Where's your God? Where's your God? The last thing he said in verse 11, this is what he said. For I shall yet praise him. The health of my countenance and my God. God broke through. He never left me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. want us to pray this prayer. Can we all stand and pray this prayer? I'm going to put it on the screen. It's the prayer of Aaron's blessing to the nation of Israel from Numbers 6 verse 24 to 26. I want us to pray this in the first person. I've actually put it there. Let's all together, let's pray. The Lord bless me and protect me. The Lord make His shine upon me and be gracious to me. The Lord lift up your countenance upon me and give me 